This is an introduction to Kirchhoff's circuit laws. Kirchhoff's circuit laws are two equalities that deal with the current and the potential difference in the lumped element model of an electrical circuit. They were first described in 1845 by a German physicist, Gustav Kirchhoff, and this work generalized the work of Georg Ohm and proceeded to work of James Clark Maxwell. Kirchhoff's current law state, first law states that the current flowing into a node or junction must be equal to the current flowing out of it. As you can see right here, this is our node. Our three currents are I1, I2, I3. I1 is positive because it's flowing into the node. I2 is negative and I3 is negative. So the sum of these three currents should equal zero according to the first law, which we have right here. So we have I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero. Well, we're going to build a circuit. And we're going to test this and see if it's correct. Also in this circuit, we have two loops. Loop one, that's a closed circuit, lumped closed circuit. Loop two is a lumped closed circuit. Now through this branch right here, uh, uh, loop one and loop two will affect each other. As we uh, scroll down, the polarity of the current is determined by the directional flow, which I stated. Currents I1, I2, excuse me, and I3 are flowing away from the node and become negatively polarized, while I1 flows into the node becomes positively polarized. As we do an analysis, which we will continue more on the next lecture, but we loop one equation equals to this. So as you go through from the positive pole to the negative pole, you develop this equation. R negative R2 I2 plus VDC minus R1 I1. So as you're coming out of a resistor, this is positive side, this is the negative side. So that makes that a negative R1. The same, and then this is positive and this is negative, that makes that a negative R2. VDC comes out as a positive. Thus creates this equation. Now according to Kirchhoff's second law, the voltage law, the sum of the voltages dropped around a closed lumped circuit is zero. And that creates this equation here. <clears throat> so we'll go to this, the second loop, which is right here. And we go from positive to negative, right? So the current's going like that, but we're assuming the current goes this way. This is a uh, positive. This will be, this is the positive end, this is the negative end, so it's a negative R3 uh, minus VDC2 minus VDC1, and then R2 is uh, negative here, positive here, plus R2, I2, and then I3 is a negative R3, I3, and that creates this equation right there, which, uh, the second law combined with Ohm's law applies to the closed circuit loop two. This creates a system of linear equations. The, uh, one, two, three, we have three, uh, three unknowns. We have three equations we can now solve. You might have noticed this yields three simultaneous equations with three unknowns. This leads us to apply the branch current method of a circuit analysis to solve for the unknowns which will be covered comprehensively in the next lecture, 107, and we'll, we won't leave anything out. We'll cover every step, so you will be able to do it. Here we're just uh, introducing the Kirchhoff's voltage law. But notice how in this equation here, I3 is missing, and in this equation here, I1's missing. So what we do is we express I1 in terms of I2, I3, we take I1, substitute it into here, and then that will leave uh, this whole equation in the expression of I2, I3. Then we set that up to solve for I2, take I2, sub it into the, this equation here. That'll allow us to solve for I3, and then once we know I3, we go back and solve for I2, and once we solve I2, we solve for I1, and that'll give us the three equations. As you can see here, we're going to assume these variables or these values for the variables. 
R1 equals 100 ohms, R2 equals 200 ohms, R3 equals 300 ohm. VDC1 is 3 volts, and VDC2 is 4 volts. Solving, we solve for I3 first. We got 0 0.0136, 36 repeating. Plug that back into the I2 equation that we needed, and we get uh, that equals 0 0.145 amps. So solving for I1 with I2, I3 in the very first equation, we get I1 equals 0 0.91 milliamps. Adding them together, we get 0 0.000001, which I could have taken it out further, and it would have become closer and closer and closer to zero. We will build this circuit at the end of this lecture, and I cannot wait to see how the simulation shows our values compared to what values we have here. That's next. All right. We're now going to build the circuit that we've been studying with the QUCS simulator. So go to your icon on your desktop, open up QCS, start a new project, new project, Kirchhoff's circuit law, create, let's get a, a document setting, we want the grid to be five or five. Apply the frame. Want A five. Select whatever you want. Title. Drawn by your name. The date. Hope everybody had a good Christmas. Version one, apply, say okay. All right, now we, we have our schematic. So we need to get our lumped components first, which is three resistors. There's R1, R2, R3. We need a power supply and a ground. We'll bring the ground over here. And we, since we have to have a ground to do our DC simulation, we also uh, need a very large resistor, which won't actually be in the solution but it is to uh, just allow the spice generator to do the proper calculations more on that later okay now we need a power supply source dc this would be vdc1 Wow, what happened there? This locks up just for no apparent reason a lot of times. Huh. Delete that. Oh, I did not disable. Or, so I should have hit escape after I selected that. Okay, we need another power supply, DC, BDC2, and this will be there we go. Um, BDC1, we want the the uh, Polarity, I have to rotate it to make it look like the schematic. All right. This needs to rotate 180 more degrees. Rotate twice. All right. 
I need our other resistor for the biasing. This is going to be such a large resistor that very little current will go through here, which will give us a small error. Okay. Now we, we know that R1 is 100 ohms. Apply. R2 is 200 ohms. Apply. R3 is 300 ohms. Apply. R4 is going to be 10 meg. Ten mega ohms. Let's see if it takes that. It did. All right. So now we'll wire wrap the circuit. Oh, a V1 that needs to be our V1 DC. We applied it to be. Uh, hang on. Three volts. Apply. Okay. And V2 is 4 volts. Now, uh, I've discovered a little trick using the cursor keys and zooming in. That really increases the uh, ease at which to uh, do your wire wrapping or your circuit connection. So just zoom in. We'll do R4 first. If you zoom in, disable that. We want to connect the red circle over the other red circle. Once you do that, you get your black dot and the circuit has been connected. And you can zoom back out. It makes it real easy to connect all this together. So I'm not going to go through that step by step. But uh, other things we need to add is the simulation. We need to add the DC simulation. Disable that. Um, and then we need our table. Our diagram. And we want a tabular table. We'll bring that down to here and put that right there. But since we're not ready for it, we'll cancel that. And then, uh, so, I'm going to break off from here and bring up the completed circuit. Okay, I've completed the circuit. I was having a lot of trouble, as you could see, connecting the dots, but I found out one way to get around that. And I'll show that to you. I'm going to add a resistor, go to the lump components, select resistor, put it there, click the cursor, rotate, get a ground component, put it right there, hit selector. Now I'm going to zoom in. As you can see right there, just come down here, hit the zoom key. Okay, deselect the zoom, select the resistor using the cursor keys. Navigate the red dot, the red circle, over the other red circle, and voila, it connects. So that, that should help you with, as building these circuits to speed that up quite a bit. <laughs> So I don't want this. I'm going to delete it. Delete it. I'm going to set my values that I what I want. I have V1 as 3 volts. V2 as 4 volts. R1 is 100 ohms. R2 is 200 ohms. 
and R3 as 300 ohms. R4 is 1 mega ohm. I want to retard any type of current going through here, so I put a barrier up, which is a 1 mega ohm resistor, which will really reduce the current flow through there. Go up to the simulate, hit that. I can hit F5. I have no errors. Go back to Kirchhoff's law and voila, just as we calculated, I1 is uh, 9. 0 0.9 milliamps, 91 milliamps. I2 is 0 0.0145 amps. And I3 is 0 0.0136. Now, that is negative. That means it's actually going this way up to this node instead of down like this. So that's, that's it. That completes that uh, circuit analysis using QUCS.